Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Julius D. Berry at Majestic Studios. Everybody's been looking for their drums in the M1 for Nautilus. Well, your files definitely came with drums. If you want to find them and find out how to use them, keep watching this video because we got them. Let's go. All right, so one of the hottest topics so far over the last week for Nautilus has been the M1 for Nautilus files that Korg released as a free update download for your Nautilus keyboard that brought all of the programs and the combinations from the Korg M1, the famous Korg M1 keyboard, directly to your Nautilus in a very small format download. But one of the problems so far that people have been talking about is that they can't find the drums. When they push the drum track button, there's nothing there. The manual said that the drums loaded to bank K. People are looking in bank K, but they can't find them. So let's dig in a little bit and show you guys a little bit about the structure of how drums are set up in your Korg workstation. All right, so what we're going to do is, first of all, um, we're going to go back and look at that file and how it said that the um, drum tracks loaded to bank K. So we're going to go to mode, then we're going to go to media, and then we're going to go to M1 for Nautilus. We're going to open it. And if you, I'm going to assume that you've already seen my last video as far as opening these files. Um, so I'm going to move a little fast with some of these parts. If you need to go check out that video that was posted earlier this week, feel free to do that at this time and then come back to this video and everything may make a little bit more sense. Okay, so once we get into the M1 for Nautilus, we're going to open the PCG file. Remember, we're looking for the one without the uh, underscore and the period in front. And we're going to open that M1 for Nautilus.pcg and we're going to go to drum kits we're going to open and it tells us right here that the drum kits are being stored in bank k now using that as a reference we're going to go to programs and we're going to look there see it says bank m but you see it looks a little different combinations are loaded to bank m but the drum kits are loaded to bank k but it says 193 through 208 <clears throat> 193 through 208. Now, just for reference, we're going to go back up a couple of levels of our directory and we're going to look at the factory, the preload factory, factory preload that came from Korg. And we're going to open that. We're going to open that PCG just the same way. And we're going to go to drum kits here. And I want to show you guys something. These are the way the default, the factory um, drum kits are sent from Korg in your keyboard. You see you have banks A through E and it has these numbers, these three digit numbers to the left. All right, you open it. Now you can see there's all these drum kits inside of here loaded onto these different levels of the file. That's a bank A, we're gonna go to bank B. You see that? All right. Okay, so from there, we're going to go back to the Nautilus file and we're going to look at it again with that in mind. You see, they have loaded those drum kits into bank K 193 through 208. So that is drum kit slots. Bank K numbers 193 through 208. They have a bunch of room in these keyboards for drum kits. Now let's just go in here and look at something else. So we're going to go to mode and we're going to go to global and we're going to go to a page that is specifically tailored to the drum kits for your keyboard. And just for reference, a lot of this, um, goes for your Kronos and your M3 and your Triton 
just as just as well all of those keyboards use this same structure as it relates to how the drum kits the programs the combis are arranged and uh, i have a video on that was done a couple of years ago on drum kits for the chronos if you want to go look at that just to get a little bit more understanding for how this is set up all right so once you get into you were into mode you went to global and then you're going to start off on this page here the basic setup but if you push page, there's a page dedicated strictly to drum kits. So we're going to push that number, I mean that button, drum kits, and it's going to take us to this screen. And then this screen is where we're able to do any and everything as it relates to drum kits. All right. Now, um, this is this screen is arranged in, in a really nice way. At the very top of the screen, you have the specific drum kit that you're editing. That is right here in this little slot. And you can change the drum kit that you're editing right there so you can take the studio standard kit and you can go in and you can edit that kit specifically and not bother any other drum kits in the keyboard it's almost just like you were editing a specific program all right so the next one is the key specifically that we're editing we can change that and as you change that you see that the instrument category moves it changes because that is the instrument category that is on that key. You can push this. You can look. They have different instrument categories. So you can keep up with um, how your uh, drum sounds are arranged or you know what sounds are um, on the keys just by looking at the key category. You have the uh, you have a kick category, snare category, hi-hat, ride crash, toms, percussion, sound effects, and then everything else. Um, all right. So as you as you move through that, category so we were on d4 uh it was a ride so we're going to go back to um ride and crash okay so that is the key that you're you're editing at that at that specific moment all right and as you're changing that you also see this little yellow graphical um feedback on the screen here that shows you okay this is the specific key that you're editing if you want to jump to a specific key you can hold the hold that key and then press the enter button. I mean, press enter and then press that key. Excuse me. You're going to hold enter and then press that key and it automatically jumps to that key. OK, your graphical interface changed, your key changed. And if the category changes and then down here, this area changes as well. Well, this assign button lets you know that there is a drum sample assigned to that key. And if you push this. OK, now that key that you're editing now is basically blank or turned off as far as your drum kit drum kit is concerned. So if you push this assign button, when you, you can also look in the graphical interface here, these pink slots across the top of the keyboard, those show you every key on your keyboard and or every key on the keyboard. And then if it has a sample assigned to it, there's a pink indicator across the top. If you push this assign button, let's see, we're gonna hit G sharp, enter G sharp to edit that key. And we're going to push the assign button and you see that little black, that pink indicator was removed. And now it's a blank spot there that shows you that there's no, uh, there's no sample assigned there. Now what that does though, when there is no sample assigned is it takes the previous sample and it pitches it down a half step. Okay. We're going to edit key F sharp number four. We have a tambourine sound here on the G above it. We have a splash for the drums symbol. And below it, we have a rod symbol. So we're going to go here to this tambourine and we're going to unassign that key. When we unassign it, what it does is it takes the sample of the key above it and it pitches it down a semitone. Okay, so if you don't assign a sample to a key, it takes the key above it, the, the sample above it, and it pitches it down a half step. So if we remove the sample from this F below it, it's gonna take this crash, and it's going to pitch it down two steps, okay? It's gonna take the sample on key G, and it's gonna pitch it down two steps. So let's see, let's remove the sample from key F. All 
All right, the sample is removed. You see the, the black mark there has appeared. So let's see. This is key G, key F sharp, key F. So key F sharp and key F were pitched down a half step from key G. So I just wanted to show you that, guys that. So we're going to go back and we're going to assign those samples back um, to those notes that we were editing. Okay, so now we have the original samples back. We have the tambourine on F sharp. We have the rod sound on key F. And originally, we have the splash on key G. All right, so that's what this top interface does. Down here in this big section is where you would assign the samples for your the specific keys. So again, we were on the key of G. Let's see the key of F sharp, I'm sorry. So you see we have a tambourine accent, tambourine push, tambourine pull A. So this is just different samples that they've assigned to this key, okay? And they're all based on, you see the velocity is over here on the right side. If you hit it softly, this is that first level. We're gonna go a little bit harder velocity. And that's the second level. And then the top velocity, all right, is that sample. And you can assign those samples and even the velocity that you want the key to be assigned by all in this screen right here. So, um, if you want to make, you can turn off these samples. Let's go, let's turn off the tambourine pull A and the tambourine push. So now you see we have no sound. You see it's the meters hitting, but we have no sound until we get to that top level of velocity. If you want to change that amount of velocity that's required, you just push this button on this row right here. This is bottom velocity and you change it and it's going to drop it down. And now, that sample, no matter how hard or soft you hit it, that sample is there because it's across all the bottom velocity is one. All right. So as low as you can, soft as you can hit the key, it's going to trigger that sample. So we're going to put that back at 108 like it had it. Okay. All right. And now the samples are back. Okay. So, with that said, that is just a short intro to how your drum kits are set up within your Korg Nautilus. Now, to show you how crazy this gets, you see all of these drum kits here. All, that's only bank A worth of drum kits. Go to bank B, look, more drum kits. Bank C, more drum kits. Bank D, more drum kits. Bank E, more drum kits. Bank F, G, H, General MIDI, I. And then you start getting to these initialized drum kits that are just like, um, just like initialized programs and combis uh, in, in the standard mode of the keyboard. So these are blank kits that you can come and you can add your own samples. You see, if there's no samples assigned, you see there's no pink indicators across the top. And you can assign your own samples and create your own drum kits from scratch using samples that Korg provides. Now check this out. If you push this button right here where the samples are, look at this. You have your drum samples categorized just like your programs and combis are. Pianos, electric pianos, synthesizers, slow synth, strings, bass. You have bass drum normal, bass drum dance, snare drum normal, snare drum dance, toms, hi-hat normal, hi-hat dance, crash, rod, china, splash cymbals, percussion, percussion normal, percussion dance, hot hit scratch, industrial voice, sound effects. All of these samples that you can choose from to create your own kits. Okay? Yo, this is crazy. It's super deep. And this has been in a lot of people don't know about the global drum kit menu. Um, that was why I did that video back a long time ago on the Korg uh, Kronos. And I want to give a shout out because the first person that I ever saw do this, um, his name is Mario Hayslett. And he was editing drum kits 
on the Trinity back when I was a kid, like nine, 10, 11 years old, I saw him going into the Trinity and tuning his snares and his hi-hats, not his hi-hats, but his snares and his, uh, the drum sounds, he was tuning them to make them sound the way he wanted them to sound. And I just, one day that just clicked in my mind, like, oh man, I remember that from when I was a kid. And I mean, we're talking like 20 years later, 25 years later, um, that I was able to utilize that. But I remembered seeing it as a kid way back on the Korg Trinity. You don't know about the Korg Trinity? Look it up. Look it up. So anyway, let's get back to this. So we have the bass drum, uh, not the bass drum. So we have all these samples that are here that you can create your drum kits from from scratch. All right. So this is taking us somewhere very specific. And I hope you guys are following me. I hope your mind's blown. That's what I really hope. Um, so we're going to um, push this drum kit to get back to the, um, hold on. All right. So if you were to want to assign your own samples to a drum kit, what you would do is you would push the button that you want to edit and you would choose assign. When you push assign, now the sample that you have set here is going to be on that key. We're on middle C. So if we were to change this, those samples start changing, okay? You can change the level, meaning how loud the sound is. You can change the bottom velocity of the sound, meaning how hard you have to hit the key to trigger it. And that way you can put multiple samples. You can put up to eight samples on one key that are velocity triggered. Okay. And, um, and the X fade range is just the amount of, uh, as far as the velocity, the samples, you can set the samples to a place where um, you can trigger more than one sample at a time where they kind of crossfade across each other. Okay, that's what X fade is. All right, so we got all of that. Um, so anyway, we're going to come back here and we're going to go. We're supposed to be going talking about the M1 drums, but this is all part of you guys understanding this infrastructure. All right, so we're going to go to over here to K which is where Korg stored the M1 kits. And if you see here, you have M1 kit one, M1 kit two, and M1 kit three. That's where your drum kits are stored. They did put them, load them into the K bank, exactly like the file said, and here they are. If you push M1 kit one and you go to okay, now you see you have a kit dedicated to the Korg M1 there's three drum kits that came. If you look here, you see where the pinks are. This is where the notes are assigned. This is where samples are assigned. The blank spaces, there are no samples there. Well, there are samples there, but remember, it's the pitch down version of the sample that was listed right above it. Okay, so with that said, how do you find your drum kit now? Great question. Great question. All right, so if you go into mode and you go to program and you look at that bank that you assigned your M1 kit to, your M1 sounds to, which is M for me, because I did the default one. You guys may have done another one custom based on what I showed you guys in that last video. We're gonna go to okay. And as we, excuse me, we're gonna, Pull that up again. We're going to select universe and we're going to go to OK. So now we are listening to the Korg M1 samples. So if we start to go through this and look at the different sounds. Here we are. M009 drums one. All right. So now.
All right, M1 drums right here. There are three kits though. So you have M009, you have, where's the other one? M029, and then the last one, where is it? M049. All right. Now, how you assign the drum kits, that's the last thing I'm going to show you in this video because it went a little longer than I really expected, but I really want you guys to understand. I don't want to just show you where stuff is and then you're able to repeat what I do. I want you guys to be able to learn and understand the structure of how this keyboard is set up so you guys can can dig in some more for yourself. And the more you understand, the more it'll kind of pique your curiosity and make you guys kind of get in here and see what is really under the hood. These keyboards are amazing. They're phenomenal. Not just the Nautilus. They're all, they're, they're just crazy what's inside them, but we never figure them out because we go to YouTube, we look for a single video where somebody shows us exactly how to do something. And then we just repeat it and spit it out, but we don't understand. I want you guys to understand what is here. All right. So we're going to go to page. I want to show you guys something. You go to page and you're going to go to OSC and pitch. And this is where you assign the samples, your oscillators for your programs generally. But with a drum kit, instead of you assigning samples to the keys, you're going to assign an entire kit. Okay. So if you look here, come on. They have assigned kit three to this patch. Okay. All right. And you can change it. If you want to change it to another kit, you can change it to another kit. All right. And this is how you assign drum kits to programs. Okay. So we're going to go back to K. And this is number three. H I J K number three. And there is our Korg. There's our Korg M1 Kit 3. So just like Korg said in the user manual, the drum kits were assigned to Bank K. That is not Bank K for programs. That is not Bank K for combis, but it's Bank K for your drum kits. And I showed you guys, you get to that by pushing mode, global, the page button, and then going to drum kits. And here are all your drum kits able to be assigned, edited, and tuned exactly the way you want them. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys learned something. Remember, there's a saying that if you give a guy a fish, he eats for one day. If you teach a guy to fish, he eats forever. I want you guys to learn. I want you guys to understand. I want you guys to be encouraged and motivated to dig in your keyboards. There's a lot under the hood. There's more to discover. And if you stay with me on this channel, I'm going to show you guys everything there is to know. At least everything that I know. All right. Keep coming back. I hope you guys are enjoying the content. Don't forget, please like, share, subscribe, comment. All of that helps. All that helps. Um, watch the videos in their entirety if you can. If you got to scrub a little bit, hey, that's fine. But just watch the content. We're putting it out here for you guys to learn, and we hope you're getting some from it. See you guys next video. Later.